Okay, so DaVinci Resolve 20.3 new features. The first feature we have is we now have an insert gap under the edit menu and when you press it, it will insert a gap into your timeline where your playhead is. The default duration of the gap is based on your standard still duration. So if you come over to DaVinci Resolve, preferences, user, editing, and standard still duration, Mine is set to five seconds. So whenever I insert a gap, it's gonna be five seconds. You can change that if you want to whatever you want. I keep it at five because I like my images to be five seconds. So you can also add a keyboard shortcut to it and you need to add a keyboard shortcut to make use of the next tip that I'm gonna show you. So if you go to your DaVinci Resolve keyboard customization, type in insert gap, I've put mine on G because I didn't use G for anything. And now when you press G at your playhead, you'll be able to insert the gap. So it is a lot better than the old way of doing it because you used to have to press Alt Y and then drag everything across. And say you wanted to do it here and you pressed Alt Y, it would still drag everything before your playhead if the playhead was touching it. But now if I want to do it here and I press the insert gap, it will make a cut and insert the gap exactly where I want it. Say you don't want your duration to be your default standard still duration. If you press plus on your keypad and I say I wanted it to be 10 frames, I could type in 10. And then you have to use the shortcut because you can't click anywhere else or it will get rid of the number you just typed. And now that gap is 10 frames. If you don't have a keypad because you're on a Mac, then you can just come up here and type in plus and then 10 or whatever amount of frames that you want and then you can press your shortcut there. Okay, the next one is they have given us a shortcut for open in timeline source viewer. So if you come over to DaVinci Resolve, keyboard customization, type in source viewer and you'll find it open in timeline source viewer. I've put mine to shift Q. So this means when you click, when you highlight a timeline, so I'm just gonna highlight this one and then I press the shortcut I've just made, shift Q. It opens the timeline up in the source viewer. So just make sure you come over here so you can see your source and your timeline that you're working through. And I know that around here, I want to insert this part. So I'm gonna add an in part here, out part there, and then just click on your timeline window. And then I want it to be here. I'm gonna use the insert shortcut that I have, and I've put mine to M, and it's gonna drag the footage from the source into my timeline. And now I know I want to make some adjustments to that, so I'll just do this. Now for the insert shortcut, I use keyboard customization, insert, and it'll be edit, insert, and then M. So if you've done this and you want to stop everything in your source opening up as a timeline, then just come up here and click on source clip again. And then it will go back to just opening up opening it up in the source window and not opening it up in the timeline. We also now have the option to name our timeline backups, which is super helpful. So if you right click on your timeline, click create timeline backup, I can call this before subtitling, something like that. And now if I want to restore that later after adding subtitles, I would right click on the timeline, restore timeline backup, find my before subtitling one, and it creates a copy, so you don't lose the work that you've done, but it does open up the backup again, so you have your old file there. So it also has improved noise reduction. Now, I know this clip needs a lot more than just noise reduction, but I've put it up to full just to show you. It used to lag a little bit when it was on full, and now it plays back very smoothly. So that is a nice improvement for those on the paid who have access to the noise reduction feature. We also have the retain views between media pools. So let me just show you for an example. Here I am in the timeline section. So if I go to my other project, I am now in the folder called one. If I go back to the contrast therapy, I'm in the timeline again. And if I go back to my Christmas, I'm in the one. And this stays even if you close down the projects. This is good because it used to just put you back to the master folder. I mean, it only saves you like two or three seconds every time you open up a project, but, it, but that kind of stuff stacks up with time anyway, so it's pretty good. We also have some new safe zones. So if you come over here, obviously we still have the social media ones that work, but they've also added the cinema ones, which is 2.39, 2.40. Now to make them show up, you have to make sure that your extents are on, on the safe area guides. And you can't really see much of a difference between 2.39 and 2.40, but 
you know, you have them there if you want them. And I didn't notice this before, so I don't think this is from 20.3, I think this is from before, but you can now change the timeline resolution up here to a few of the default options. So if I want this to quickly be an Instagram reel, I can click portrait. Obviously you'll have to reframe everything still, but it's quicker than before. You can change it from 1920 to 4K or enter your custom timeline settings here. Just easier than having to find your timeline in the project folder and do it that way. And that's it, just a few quick tips on DaVinci Resolve's 20.3.